This turn has been relatively unremarkable for me. I think I already worked out most of the player's intentions during the builds phase, and so there wasn't that much to talk about during the move selection turn. I negotiated with France the most of any player because we are, or I believe the French player is honestly trying to work with me to resist England somehow. It's not going to be easy since between the two of us we only have two fleets and England has five. But uh, I believe the French player is being honest. We went back and forth a little bit about what our precise tactics must be and ultimately converged on France supporting my army at Ruhr into Belgium and that France would try to make some kind of attack on England, maybe moving Mid-Atlantic Ocean to Irish Sea. My tactical situation is quite difficult because not only do I have to somehow prevent England from making further attacks against me, if I want to actually build a new unit from Belgium, I have to have one of my home centers open to be able to build a unit, and I very badly want to be able to build a fleet for fighting England. Uh, multiple fleets are going to be necessary to be able to dig England out of these positions England has. So working backwards from what I'm trying to achieve there, I decided to move Kiel to Denmark, supported by Heligoland Bight, and my thinking there is that England might move Denmark to Baltic Sea to set up for future attacks on Kiel and Berlin, maybe even to convoy an army somewhere like Prussia. And if so, I don't have a way to block the move to Baltic, but I could try to interfere with the English player reconfiguring units into Denmark. Another concern I have is that the English player might try to make a supported attack on Heligoland Bight. And if I don't leave open a retreat point, that fleet could be destroyed. Given how much of the English player's strategy has been around preventing or disabling a fleet presence in the north, which is a very good strategy, I admit, uh, that makes it seem likely to me that the English player could try to dislodge Heligo and Bite in the hope that I will not be able to uh, retreat it somewhere. That the best way the, the English player could do that would be to support Denmark to Heligo and Bite with North Sea. A move that I can't counter. So I am leaving Holland open in case I have to retreat there with my fleet. It is a somewhat of a risk. The English player could make a surprise attack on Holland and that would be really difficult to deal with, but uh, I think that's the risk that I want to take here. And after worrying a lot about whether the Italian and or Austrian player would attack Munich, I decided to trust them this turn and move Munich to Ruhr so that I have better opportunities for fighting England if the turn works out, especially if I'm able to get that support into Belgium successfully It's not and it's not blocked by the English player. I feel somewhat confident about the turn. I don't feel good about my overall prospects given England's very high level of strategic power. But even then, I'm a little hopeful on that because it seems like the other powers have some understanding that the English player is significantly stronger, strategically speaking, than the other powers, even though England and Russia are tied at seven supply centers. Okay, I'm coming into this turn with a much more optimistic attitude than I've had the last couple of turns. The first thing to mention is that France got away with misleading England about wanting to move to Belgium via a convoy order so that England wasted, waste, England wasted a move at English Channel. This was a clever trick by France, and I think it changed the trajectory of the game somewhat. This meant that France's supported order for my army to move into Belgium worked. France actually let me in on this in advance, and I did not leak it. This means that the French player is showing me some trust, and France is clearly trying to get a more serious alliance going with me. Uh, France did trust me at the beginning of the game, and I abused that trust to help England, but maybe there's maybe there's something between us. Maybe I should have been working with this player all along. Uh, France also told me about their move to Irish Sea, and I kept my mouth shut about that as well. So as a consequence of France's successful moves and support for me, the turn went pretty well, and my situation is no longer hopeless. England is now in danger of losing up to two centers since England cannot defend Liverpool and cannot take Belgium by force if France helps me defend it. So 
unless England takes centers elsewhere, possibly for me, uh, unless England takes centers elsewhere, England will have to disband and be a smaller threat. It is also possible that I could get a build, but a lot has to go right. I need none of these other players bordering me to snipe Munich from me, and I need England not to take any of my centers. And at the same time, I want to keep Kiel or Berlin open so that I could build a fleet if I want to press an attack versus England, and that's a little bit dangerous. So the French player is still trying to work with me, and the Russian player reached out to see how things are going. We've had a little bit of a back and forth. The Austrians sent a lot of press about how sinister the Italian is and not to trust that player. I, to be honest, I don't really have a very high opinion of Italy's play this game, at least in terms of the press, uh, but there's really nothing I can do. I'm nervous that Italy might try to steal a center from me or from France, especially since it looks like England's about to lose one or two centers. Personally, I am not a fan of Italy's press style. Italy sends multiple gigantic messages that are all over the place. Uh, these are, for me, mentally taxing to sift through and understand, and, and yet I find myself thinking, uh, I have no idea what this guy wants or why he even messaged me, really. So I mostly ignore this player's press. In response to the Austrians' messages, I, I said to Austria, hey, <laughs> please destroy Italy. Take a crack at it. Uh, later in the turn, there are some messages by Italy about message passing and whatnot, and I, I have nothing to do with it. I don't really know what he's talking about. I don't care. It seems like a big waste of time to me and a distraction. Uh, I offered a deal to England. Hey, stop attacking me. Clearly move away your pieces, and I won't build a fleet. England accepted this offer in words, but let's see if England keeps his word. I personally love this kind of deal where the other player has to act first, so if England doesn't fulfill this promise, I don't know, I'm not obligated to do anything. But even if England does keep his word, I can still decide to build a fleet if I want to based on how things look. Based on the messages I got from France, Austria, and Russia, and my general anxiety of how the Italian player chooses moves, I decided I should just cover Munich. There's, I think there's a lot of temptation there, and that players, that, that particular Italian player seems to just do whatever they want to do and then shower the other players with a bunch of words after the fact. I, I guess, now that I'm saying it out loud, I don't trust the Italian player at all, really, despite his repeated reassurance that he would not move to Munich. The French player agreed to support whole Belgium, and I believe him. Therefore, I will hold Belgium and hope to make that capture. I decided to cover Holland and Berlin and Munich against possible attacks and leave Kiel open. I want Kiel, if I have a center open, I want it to be Kiel in case I get a build because many players are hoping that I will build a fleet and I would like to keep that hope alive in them. And I also think that England is unlikely to attack Kiel, first of all, because I do think England will prioritize defending against other players over harassing me since it's, there's no clear way England can attack me. England can't. England can see that I'm going to cover my center somehow, and will probably not take a risk of antagonizing me further without a sure way to get one of those centers. And finally, I think that if England does attack, England would most likely go for Holland or Belgium over Kiel because I have a lot of units that can cover Kiel, and I can even self bounce there. I am very careful this turn. I've been very careful to tell no one my precise plans. I'm quite nervous that a word of my intention could get around and be exploited by somebody else. I explicitly told the other players that I would not tell them my moves and they accepted this. Ah, another turn that went fairly well for me. In terms of my own moves, they all worked. I kept all my centers. I was able to keep Kiel open for a build despite risking England striking there and all my neighbors cooperated with me, including even England, who prioritized defending his home centers over fighting me as I predicted. The only decision for me to make this turn is whether to build a fleet or an army. And the choice, I think, is obvious. I want a fleet. The only offensive options I'm considering for next year are to go for Denmark and to take that back from England, which would probably best be accomplished with another fleet. 
or maybe a surprise attack on Russia at Warsaw, which would probably also require me to build a fleet so that Russia doesn't see it coming. And I probably would even still want a fleet if I'm going to fight Russia due to Russia's approach on Scandinavia. The other players all encouraged me to build a fleet, except England, so I probably want to stay on the good side of the collective group. I don't have to care that much what England thinks of me, because I don't think England can do or will do much about me even if I get a fleet. I previously promised England that I would build an army, but I just don't feel inclined to keep that promise. There's so much more to, for me to, to gain by building a fleet here, both tactically and politically. And wow, what a reversal of fortune for England. It shows how the caliber of player in this match is pretty good, given what a striking response we had to England's ascendancy. There was, in my opinion, a small window of opportunity there to beat England back down, and many players had to cooperate and guess correctly about what England would do, but all of that worked out for everyone except England. So now, Russia is ascendant, and perhaps is even more threatening than England was. Maybe a favorite to actually win this match now. Russia has two corners, Russia's starting position, and also Russia has conquered all of Anatolia. And Turkey was talked into sending a fleet further out, which just means Russia has effectively gained all of Turkey's centers, and capturing Smyrna is just a formality. And for that matter, Russia will easily gain Norway and Sweden due to having three units in position to take it and England having had to make two disbands. England will probably treat Scandinavia as expendable. So Russia has four neighbors, one of whom Russia has consumed, Turkey, one who Russia can start taking centers from, England, and the other two are fairly weak. I'm recovering from a backstab and still don't have very many centers, and Austria is evidently at war with Italy while not having profited really from Turkey's demise. Russia is much, much stronger than the mere count of centers would have you think. So with my mind made up on what I'm going to do in terms of my build, I spent a lot of time this turn talking to the other players, just talking. I tried to s stay as friendly towards England, say friendly things so that England would disband units that are closer to me and not prioritize fighting me in the coming year. I consider this a relatively minor aspect of what I talked about though. Most of my messaging was spent talking with France, Italy, and Austria about what we're going to do about Russia. Italy seems appropriately nervous, but probably cares more about Austria not attacking him than about Russia per se. France, I can't, France can't really do much about this. And I don't think France is going to call off his attack on England just to harm Russia somehow. I don't even know if that would make a difference. I tried to feel out whether Austria might unite with me against Russia, but that was a clear non-starter. Austria discouraged me from attacking Russia and made it clear he's going to attack Italy. I don't think this is strategically sensible, but I decided not to press the issue. I face a difficult choice now in the future. I could help Austria or at least let Austria have a free hand against Italy so that Austria is strong enough to resist Russia later, or I could help Italy somehow. I think I know what Austria's moves will be. I could give that information to Italy so that Italy can put up a better defense. The idea that Austria is not interested in attacking Russia or even menacing Russia despite Russia's massively disproportionate level of power indicates to me that Austria is a dangerous player in the sense of not playing by realpolitik. My inference is that either Austria has developed a sentimental relationship with Russia that has led to an excessive level of trust in or preference for Russia that might get all of us a loss when Russia eventually goes for the win, or that Austria is so contemptuous of Italy that Austria has prioritized the destruction of Italy above all else. Both of those ways of thinking are incredibly dangerous to me as Russia is going to be a huge threat to me later on, and if Austria helps Russia against me, or even just refuses to help me, I'll probably be eliminated, even if the ultimate consequence is Austria losing the match. I consider a player who doesn't play by Realpolitik to be uh, quite dangerous when I am on the back foot. If I were winning and Austria were my ally, I'd be loving the situation. I keep around players like that as allies precisely because they lead to my solo win. 
So, meanwhile, Russia and I have had a polite discussion about breaking up England centers. I see no reason for me to express hostility to Russia or to antagonize Russia with my moves when no one's going to be there to back me up if I fight Russia. The other players would probably gladly sell me out to Russia while they focus on other things, that seems clear. I'd much rather Russia get strong and force a reckoning than to take on Russia by myself. And I told the other players this explicitly. Anyways, I have started working out an arrangement with Russia for how we will bring down England. England, my former ally, I have no interest in saving your bacon. You backstabbed me over just one supply center, apparently out of sheer greed. I don't trust players who play like that. I'd much rather you get eliminated and try to negotiate with France or Russia about what I'm going to do in the aftermath. I don't trust you to do anything that isn't in your immediate tactical interest. And uh, when a player that is selfish is close to being eliminated, they rarely do anything to help someone else. So no thanks. I might not attack England, but I am not going to help. Russia may be a huge strategic threat, but I don't think that will go away just by helping England. I think that will just prolong England's inevitable decline. Meanwhile, France and I opened up to each other quite a bit. The other players may not suspect or realize this, or, or maybe they do, I don't know, but we're trying to develop a very close diplomatic relationship. In passing, let me say that the players all blew up the anonymity rule, and this was very frustrating to me. Several players announced their identities in the game immediately, and between their constant revelation of non-game related personal facts and these outright identity giveaways, it was very easy for the other players to deduce. Oh, Germany is brotherboard. Being understood as brotherboard is kind of dangerous for me because I advocate on my blog and I follow in my play a soloist style. So even though one of my favorite strategies is to impersonate being a Care Bear who plays for draws and I have a good track record with this strategy, that's not available to me if the players understand who I am. So I confirmed my identity to France, who already knew who I was at that point, to avoid seeming impersonal. We exchanged some love letters about how we prefer each other over the others, and for what it's worth, I meant what I said to France. Uh, I in fact like France much better as a potential ally than anybody else. Russia comes in second, but Russia did attack me early on for reasons that I don't appreciate. So France and I exchanged this huge volume of press, I think we're on the same page strategically. In addition, France and I conspired on how to share information with each other about what we know the other players are doing, to spread lies so that other powers make mistakes. I think this is a great way to play a two-power alliance, and I think this is a good way to counter the strength of the apparent Austria-Russia alliance, especially since it seems like Italy is on our side as maybe a third power here, and maybe in the long run, the trajectory of this match is for me to get wiped out, as Germany can often get squeezed out of the match after France has conquered Great Britain and Russia has conquered Scandinavia. I think there's at least a 50% chance of this happening to me later on. But even with that danger in mind, I think it is worth the risk to try to have stronger long-term relationships with France and Russia. Maybe one of them will help me out. Austria published a video ascribing to me a personality of a gunboat player who has maybe wandered his way into a press game. Austria, I think you are sorely mistaken. I, your bored brother, can pour words onto a keyboard the way other people breathe air. But I also have a sense of discretion. I don't write messages just for the sake of it, as that can be annoying and use up my credibility and so on. I have sent a huge volume of press this match, just not to you, Austria. I don't trust you, so I have little to say to you. I'm incredibly nervous that anything I tell you will find its way back to Russia, and since I have a very anti-Russia strategic opinion right now, and I want to conceal that from Russia, I think that's the way to keep it. So let's see what happens next.